A warm welcome to the 36th lecture on the subject of wavelets and multi-rate digital signal processing. You will recall that in the previous lecture, we had hinted briefly at the idea of a polyphase decomposition. In fact, we had used that idea of a polyphase decomposition for various reasons. We have been using it time and again to construct different kinds of structures to carry out computation efficiently in a filter bank, but we have not put down formally a whole approach based on polyphase components. Moreover, we have not quite considered the alternative approaches to the question of perfect reconstruction to date. So, in the lecture today, what I intend to talk about is two approaches to the general perfect reconstruction problem, namely the polyphase approach and the modulation approach. Both of these are essentially approaches to handle the question, when does a filter bank give perfect reconstruction of the input? And what we are going to do today is applicable not only to two band filter banks, but also to general m band filter banks, where m could be a positive integer greater than 2. Let us begin with the first of these two approaches, namely the polyphase approach. Now, we have already introduced the idea of polyphase components earlier. Let me recapitulate that idea. You see, when you have a sequence x of n with its z transform capital X of z with an appropriate region of convergence, we have seen that we can separate the samples of n which the samples of x n which lie at n a multiple of 2 and lie away from a multiple of 2. In other words, we can consider the index n as broken down into 2 m and 2 m plus 1 for all integer m. So, when we let m vary over all the integers here, then all possible integers n would be covered. So, what we have talked about here is what is called a second order polyphase component or polyphase component polyphase decomposition of order 2. What we want to do first is to generalize this. So, suppose for example, we wanted polyphase decomposition of order 3. What we are then going to do is to ask that the integer n be one of these three possibilities 3 m 3 m plus 1 and 3 m plus 2 overall integer m. And when m varies over all possible integers, then we have covered all possible possible integer values of small n here. In general, suppose one talks of order capital M.
We are then referring to a decomposition of the index n as follows. Capital M times small m, capital M times small m plus 1 and so on up to capital M times small m plus m minus 1 over all integer small m. And on so doing, on letting small m vary over all the possible integers, we have actually spanned the entire set of integer n. So, now let us put down explicitly the mechanism for decomposition of x z. So, the z transform into the z transforms of the polyphase components of order m. To do that, we shall essentially split this index capital N in the way that we have just described. So, what we are saying effectively is to decompose x z using polyphase decomposition. order capital M. Essentially, we write down capital X of z in terms of the sequence and now decompose the summation or split the summation on n into summation n going from minus to plus infinity is the same as summation l going from 0 to m minus 1 and summation m going from minus to plus infinity and where here you would have a variation as a function of n, here you would have variations as a function of m capital M times small m plus l. So, we just change the nature of the variable, the specification of the variable. Let me illustrate concretely. So, capital X of z in other words becomes summation l going from 0 to capital M minus 1, summation m going from minus to plus infinity x capital M times small m plus l times z raised to the power minus capital M times small m plus l. And now, we can split this exponential into two parts z raised to the power minus m times small m into z raised to the power minus l and noting that z raised to the power minus l can be brought outside the summation on capital on small m, we could rewrite this as follows. Capital X of z is summation l going from 0 to capital M minus 1 z raised to the power minus l and in brackets then you have summation m going from minus to plus infinity x capital M small m plus l times z raised to the power minus capital M times small m. Now, essentially this is the z transform of all those points which lie at multiples of capital M plus small l. So, for example, when l is equal to 0, essentially this refers to z transform of all those points which lie at multiples of capital M. When l is equal to 1, 
this refers to all those points the z transform of all those points which lie at multiples of capital M plus 1 displaced by 1 from multiples of capital M and so on when L is equal to 2 they are displaced by 2 steps and so on and this can only go up to capital M minus 1 steps because when you go to capital M you are coming back to the original case of L equal to 0. So, what we have done here is to break x z into m parts, m disjoint parts in some sense and we shall use some notation now. We shall refer to this quantity here as capital X L m z raise to the power m. So, what we are saying here is you have the mth order polyphase component and the lth of those components with the argument given by z raise to the power m here. Let me let me write down this explicitly. Capital X small l capital M z raise to z just z is essentially summation m going from minus to plus infinity x m small m plus l z raise to the power minus m note here I do not have a capital M occurring here because I have replaced z raise to the power m by z and this is essentially is essentially the z transform of the lth polyphase component of the sequence x order m. So, here there are two things that are important in general in polyphase decomposition the order of decomposition and the component number. There would be as many components as the order. So, when capital M is equal to 2 there are going to be two components 0 and 1. When capital M is equal to 3 there are going to be three components 0, 1 and 2 and so on. And in fact, we can write down a very simple relationship between the z transform of the original sequence and the z transforms of its polyphase components. So, capital X of z becomes summation L going from 0 to m minus 1 z raised to the minus L x L m z raise to the power m. This is the manifestation of polyphase decomposition in the z domain. Now, this is just to explain and define the idea of polyphase decomposition in general. What we would now like to do is to see how this polyphase decomposition works when you have an analysis and a synthesis site. We would like to write down a general relationship for analysis synthesis polyphase components and how they interact to give perfect reconstruction. So, you see let us look at the analysis side. In fact, now for some variety and also to generalize let us look at the general case general analysis branch in an m band filter band. Now, you know so far we have been talking just two band and slowly my objective in this lecture is to go from two to m band. So, I would like to bring in m band first and then put m equal to two as a special case. So, what is firstly the m band filter bank? A 
essentially it is an analysis synthesis structure with the following nature. On the analysis side, you have a typical let us say lth branch, where you have a filter or let us use kth branch to avoid mixing up with the polyphase component index. So, capital H k z followed by a down sampling by m. This is a typical analysis branch. And in general, we could have B branches here. Now, the number B could be different from the number capital M that should be stressed, they do not have to be the same. A typical synthesis branch would look like this, you would have an up sampler we earlier had upsamplers of factor 2, now we would have upsamplers of factor m in general, followed by the so called synthesis filter the k th such. So, g k z and there could be b such branches too. Again, I must stress that B need not be the same as capital M. Needless to say, in a given M band filter bank, the number of analysis branches and the number of synthesis branches must be the same. In fact, there is a one to one correspondence when there is an analysis, there is also a synthesis on the same branch. So, let us draw the overall structure. So, this is the structure we are talking about. Now, notice that you have the same B on the analysis and synthesis side, but B is different from M and there are therefore, three possibilities. B could be equal to M, B could be less than M, B could be greater than M. Let us write down these three possibilities here. Notice of course, that an analysis filter is always followed by a synthesis filter. So, you have you know an analysis and synthesis filter coming in cascade with the down and up samplers in between. So, B could be equal to M. Such a filter bank, such an M band filter bank is called a critically sampled. M band filter bank. B could be less than M, in which case we call it an undersampled M band filter bank. And 
on the other hand b could be greater than m in which case we call it an oversampled m band filter bank. Whether the filter bank is critically sampled or undersampled or oversampled, the essential mechanism of analysis, whether by the polyphase approach or the modulation approach, does not change. The essential idea remains the same. What needs to be checked is on analysis whether we get the desired conditions, whether we get perfect reconstruction, whether we get something else. Sometimes we may not want perfect reconstruction, we might want something else from a filter bank, we might want the overall filter bank to perform a certain overall filtering operation that is possible. It is not necessary that we always want perfect reconstruction. Whatever it is, the overall analysis of what a filter bank does can be done by the polyphase approach or by the modulation approach and that holds whether or not it is critically sampled. That is whether it is critically sampled, under sampled or over sampled. This is a point which I want to make before I begin to discuss the approaches in depth. Now, the polyphase approach says decompose the filters both analysis and synthesis into polyphase components and decompose the input and the output also into its polyphase components of order m. Note the order of the polyphase decomposition is the same as the down and up sampling factors. So, The polyphase approach says, let us write it down clearly. Decompose the input output analysis filters and synthesis filters. to polyphase components of order m. And what we shall do here is to take one of those b branches and see what we get. And once we understand what happens on the kth of the b branches, we shall understand what happens overall. So, Consider the kth branch. So, we have the input subjected to the action of H k z followed by downsampling by m followed by upsampling by m and then subjected to the action of g k z. And we wish to analyze what this is doing in the polyphase domain. So, let us write down the input z transform capital X of z here and let us see what z transform emerges here. So, you see x z can of course, be written in terms of its polyphase components and that gives you summation L going from 0 to m minus 1 capital X L capital M z raise to the power m multiplied by z raise to the power minus L, where you have capital X L m as the lth polyphase component of order m of the sequence x. Similarly, we can take the kth filter here and decompose this as well into its polyphase components of order capital M. So, we could write Hmm. 
Now, here you will have a threefold index. So, filter number, polyphase component number, order of the polyphase component z raised to the power m. And now, let us multiply. So, x z h k z is what emerges after the filtering operation. Now, you know we are not really interested in x z times h k z. So, let us short circuit you know the solution to the first step. What we are really interested in is this subjected to downsampling. We are not interested at this point, we are interested at this point. So, what we want to get at this point is only the 0th order polyphase component. Z sorry, the 0th polyphase component of order m. We are not interested in the other polyphase components, the 1th up to the m minus 1th. After we have taken this product, we just wish to understand or bring out or pull out that component which is of order 0 and how will we get that. So, you know we have this product x z times h k z is of the form summation l 1 going from 0 to m minus 1 summation l 2 going from 0 to m minus 1 z raised to the minus l 1 times z raised to the minus l 2 times capital X l 1 m z raised to the m and capital H k l 2 m z raised to the m. So, you know as far as pulling out the component of order 0 is concerned, what we need to see is that there must only be z raised to the power of m terms. There must not be a hanging power of z in whatever we choose. When will that happen? That is going to happen when L 1 plus L 2, you know when this essentially contributes a power of m. So, what we are saying in effect is the 0th polyphase component results when z raised to the power minus L 1, z raised to the power minus L 2, which is equal to z raised to the power minus L 1 plus L 2 contributes z raised to the power m times some integer. So, let us say L 0. And that is easy to document we can easily see when this is going to happen. So, let us make a table. In fact, we can make a table of L 1 and L 2. So, when L 1 is 0, there is no other possibility, but that L 2 be 0. When L 1 is 1, there is no possibility other than that L 2 be m minus 1. And finally, when L 1 is m minus 1, there is no possibility other than that L 2 be 1. There is a very easy association. So, in fact, there is just one pair that needs to go together. With each L 1, we can choose only one unique L 2, so that we can pull out the 0th order polyphase component. So, in fact, we have a very simple expression for this. You know, all that we are saying is consider m minus 
L 1. So, you know when you take m minus 0, but take it modulo capital M, you get 0. m minus 1 will of course, give you m minus 1 as expected, m minus m minus 1 gives you 1. So, in other words, what we are saying here is that L 2 has been chosen as m minus L 1 modulo m. So, this is modulo m. So, with this choice what we are saying is x z h k z down sampled by m is essentially going to give you the following it is going to give you x 0 z or if you like x 0 m z h k 0 m z plus summation l going from 1 to m minus 1. x l m z h k m minus l m z and there is a multiplication by z inverse here. Please note there is a multiplication by z inverse because except for l equal to 0 or in other words except for this case where L 1 is equal to 0 and L 2 is equal to 0. For all the other cases, you have L 1 plus L 2 summing up to capital M. So, when you down sample by capital M, you get a z inverse power, a z raised to the power minus m term would have remained originally and on down sampling it becomes z inverse. A simple, but elegant and beautiful expression that we have right here. So, x 0 m I will repeat it x 0 m times h k 0 m plus z inverse times summation l going from 1 to m minus 1 x l m h k m minus l m. In fact, we can now write down a matrix for each of these branches. So, you know what we are saying in effect is I can put down the outputs of these B branches a typical one emerging from the say kth branch at this point and we could arrange them in the form of a vector. So, let us arrange them in the form of a vector. So, let me write down the analysis vector. And let me find out the typical kth row of the matrix here. So, a typical element in the analysis vector would correspond to the kth row times a vector of polyphase components of x. So, let us write that down capital X 0 m capital X 1 m up to capital X m minus 1 m and I will write down the kth row. The kth row would look like this.
note in the kth row, we have taken care of the z inverse here. We have taken care of the fact that, you know, if you go back to the matrix vector product, the number or the expression in z which should get multiplied by x 1 m is going to be h k m minus 1 m. The number getting multiplied by x m minus 1 m is h k 1 m. So, there is that so called inversion here. Now, this structure which we obtain here, where you have b rows and the vector of polyphase components of x is called the analysis polyphase matrix. So, in general we have what is called the analysis polyphase matrix. with kth row as described. And the size of the analysis polyphase matrix is obviously going to be as many branches times the order of polyphase decomposition. Now, after upsampling, every z is going to be replaced by z raised to the power m that is simple. So, let us consider what happens on the kth branch after upsampling by m followed by filtering by g. So, you know essentially upsampling would replace z by z raise to the power m. And then filtering with g k z would again produce m polyphase components here. So, let us call this output capital Y k z. And if we happen to decompose capital Y k z into its polyphase components, that is, if we were to write capital Y k z is summation L going from 0 to m minus 1 z raise to the minus L y k m z raise to the power m. Then it is very easy to see that you know if you look at it here what comes here is anyway a function of z raise to the power of m. So, to get hanging powers of z inverse, you must take the corresponding hanging powers of z inverse appearing from this filter. So, in fact, if you take the lth such, well, I am sorry, this should be l here, there is a little correction. So, so you have y k, well, you know, actually we should write y k l, because there are three indices here. So, let me rewrite this. Summation l going from 0 to m minus 1 z raise to the power minus l capital Y k l m z raise to the power m. There are three indices and we can make a very clear specification of what y k l m shall look like. What we are saying is g k z would itself be decomposed as summation l going from 0 to m minus 1 g k l m z raise to the power m multiplied by z raise to the power minus l. And essentially y k l m z raise to the power m is g k l m z raise to the power m times essentially the output of kth up sampler as is. Because 
because that is already a in terms of z raise the power of m. In fact, we can write down explicitly what that is. The output of the kth upsampler as is is essentially the kth row of analysis polyphase matrix multiplied by the input polyphase vector. So, capital X 0 m, capital X 1 m and so on up to capital X minus X m minus 1 m here. The only catch is z has been replaced by z raise to the power m that is the only change. In all this which are all functions of z, z has been replaced by z raise to the power m. Now, this is what is called the polyphase approach to analyzing the overall m band filter pack. Now, we have seen the kth branch, the output is of course, summation k going from 1 to b y k z, there are b branches remember and therefore, y l m z the lth polyphase component of order m of the output is easily seen to be. Let me just recapitulate for you here the expression here. All that we need to do is to sum over k here. So, we have summation k going from 1 to b g k l m z raise the power m times the output of kth upsampler as is. So, now we could write down a vector of output polyphase components and input polyphase components and relate them. So, we could construct a vector of output polyphase components here y 0 m, y 1 m and so on up to y m minus 1 m. And we could note that essentially this can be obtained. Now, you know if I take any one of these so, take y 0 m for example, it involves g k 0 m summed over all k going from 1 to b. So, what kind of situation are we talking about? We are talking about a vector of size m here and a matrix of size m cross b of essentially polyphase components of the synthesis filter. polyphase components of the g k s and I could write down the lth row here. 
This is called the synthesis polyphase matrix. And let us write down the lth row. So, of course, note that L goes from 0 to m minus 1. The lth row of the synthesis polyphase matrix essentially G 0 L m z raise z raise to the m if now that depends on whether you know whether it's z whether the argument is z raise the power of m or z depends on the argument here for convenience let us assume the argument here is z raise the power of m so it would be z raise the power of m and this would go to be such branches. So, b minus 1 l m z raise to power m. So, now we have m such rows and each row has b elements. Look at the analysis, analysis polyphase matrix. It has b rows with m elements in each row. So, overall the output polyphase matrix or polyphase vector as a function of z raised to the m is equal to the polyphase synthesis matrix of course, as a function of z raised to the power m times the polyphase analysis matrix again as a function of z raised to the m times the input polyphase vector. Again as a function of z raised to the m. sizes. This is well number of rows m cross 1, this is m cross b, this is well it has b and again cross m and then m cross 1. So, of course, all this is going to be finally m cross 1. Now, what we have shown here is an overall structure, an overall analysis of an m band filter bank with b branches in terms of the polyphase components. I would now like to spend a few minutes on discussing the modulation approach, but we shall deal with it in depth in the next lecture. So, we just wish to contrast the modulation approach with the polyphase approach and leave it at that for this lecture. So, we have seen the polyphase approach in detail. You see in the modulation approach what we do is as follows. Treat down sampling 
has a sum of modulations. So, in other words, let me take the example of m equal to 2. Remember that downsampling by 2 followed by upsampling by 2. You know, this process of downsampling by 2 followed by upsampling by 2 was treated as equivalent to multiplication by a sequence which is 1 at all multiples of 2 and 0 elsewhere. So, you have a sequence which is 1, 0, 1, 0 alternately like this. So, together this was equivalent to multiplication by this. Now, in general for other m, the corresponding multiplying sequence would be 1 at all multiples of capital M followed by m minus 1 zeros in between again a 1 and then m minus 1 zeros and so on. So, this periodic sequence. In the modulation approach the idea is instead of decomposing the sequence in time we essentially treat the sequence as a sum of modulates and we combine the down and the up sampler when we treat it thus as a sum. Having done so we put down a different kind of matrix for the reconstruction treating it as a sum of modulates. In the next lecture we shall go further and delve deeper into the modulation approach and contrast it with the polyphase approach bringing out the differences and the similarities between the two. And then we shall proceed to establish conditions for perfect reconstruction based on both of these approaches. Thank you.